Hi, welcome to Dining's graduation trip. After leaving Serbia, I've now arrived in the United Arab Emirates. Like Serbia, this is another country where Chinese passport holder can enter visa free. It's also a place famous for its incredible architectural wonders. I flew directly from Belgrade to Dubai. On the plane, I said good night to Europe. And when I woke up, I was in Asia. Personally, I feel Dubai is much more modern than Europe. Walking in the Dubai airport, I feel like humanity has entered the next stage of civilization. Though, I get the similar vibe at Beijing Capital Airport. After retrieving my luggage, I bought a metro card for unlimited rides all day and headed to my hotel via the metro to check in. The final destination of this train is 2020. The next station is... The hotel lobby even had shared power banks, just like in China. I cannot believe what I booked. It's... Uh, <laughs> A very big room. It's like a suite. Wow. Oh, look at my bed. Oh, everything is perfect. They have air condition, and this is my bathroom with a tub. And this is the other bathroom. Wow. I love Dubai. Everything's perfect. Like the wheel. Oh, it's a real city wheel. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm so happy. This is my first time to stay in Dubai. I'm worried that I don't know where to buy a SIM card because I cannot use Google Map without data and I cannot go out without Google Map. But um, this morning when I checked in at my hotel, I suddenly found the custom stuff, put it this in my passport. And this is a free SIM card with 1G data. Now I have data to use Google Map. I can go out to, uh, to explore the city. And oh, they even give me the needle for changing the card. They're so sweet. And Dubai is so good for tourists. After a short rest and a change of clothes, I was ready to head to my first destination of the day, the Museum of the Future. Just walking through the tunnel leading from the Mantra station to the museum made me feel like my journey into the future had already begun. I take it online in advance so I can directly pick up this wristband.
entering the museum, we were transported to the year 2071. Leaving Earth seemed as simple as taking the mantra. Humanity has never stopped dreaming of moving outer space. And here, that dream is made tangible. There are many interactive activities here that both children and adults can participate in. I also saw what it could be like to be an astronaut. The space journey is over. I and other human crew members are returning to Earth. Other sections of the museum are called Witness the Wonders of Nature and Explore a Library of Life, where we could see various plants and animals recreated with light and sound. It was so amazing that I wasn't even sure if I was still on Earth.
here is Revive Your Senses, a section designed to help us explore our own senses through the body. There were also an exhibition hall featuring futuristic objects, but I didn't spend much time there since you can actually go to the terrace to get a different perspective of the museum's architecture. That wrapped up my tour of the Museum of Future, and what a unique experience it was. Dubai is always pushing the envelope. Next, I'm heading to my second landmark destination of the day, the tallest building in the world. On the metro, I watched the sunset alongside commuters returning home from work. Dubai has many such air-conditioned corridors, so people don't have to walk outdoors in the high temperatures. have reached the entrance of the Burj Khalifa. I had a VIP ticket, which means I can access higher floors. The building, it's 160 floors. It's a hotel, residential, and offices. The Burj Khalifa has 56 elevators with a top speed of 17.4 meters per second, making them the fattest and the longest running elevators in the world. So there's no need to worry about spending too much time waiting for or riding the elevators. The 154th floor complete with drinks and snacks. I haven't eaten anything all day, so I decided to have my first meal in Dubai at the Sky Lounge.
This observation deck on this floor is 584 meters above the ground, offering a stunning 360 degree views of the city at night. Dubai's skyline is truly dazzling after dark. The observation deck is quite spacious, and even at night, the wind felt very, very hot. After enjoying some delicious food and gazing over Dubai, I decided to visit 124th and 125th floors. However, I needed a staff assistant to operate the elevator. The lower floors were noticeably busier and more crowded than the upper one. There were some interactive exhibits, but I quickly moved on since I wanted to catch the world's largest musical fountain show below. Before exiting the Burj Khalifa, I took a look at the history of its construction. Its cross section is Y shaped, which helped the building withstand strong winds. Standing at 828 meters tall, with 162 floors, and costing 1.5 billion US dollars. The Burj Khalifa was completed in five years by 4,000 workers. Originally called Burj Dubai, it was renamed in honor of Sheikh Khalifa, the president of the UAE and the ruler of Abu Dhabi, who provided financial support when Dubai encountered funding issues during construction. In the ancient terrible world, Khalifa referred to the supreme leader of the Islamic world and was also a title for rulers of the Arab Empire. As I stepped outside the Burj Khalifa, I caught the last few seconds of the fountain show. Okay, let's take one more look at the Burj Khalifa. This is not only a symbol of Dubai, it's also a global icon. Now I'm heading back to my hotel on foot. And I have to say, walking in Dubai's summer heat was not a smart choice. I told you it's a very big room. And I told you I have a very, very good wheel. So now I want to show you the night wheel. Look, the tower. <sighs> this is Dubai. Dubai never sleep. But for me, it's time for bed. Tomorrow, I'm going to Abu Dhabi. See you in my next video. Sono Tairin. Un bacio.